All right. Hello there, health coaches. Thank you so much for joining me today. I know many of you are starting out in this field. So today we're going to talk about the most common fears that come up and kind of dismantle them piece by piece. Now, of course, I am doing this. I am feeling still a little bit jet lagged. I'm doing all right today, but oh man, it's been rough the past few days. My kids and I just spent two weeks in Italy and our circadian clocks are like, what is going on right now? But I'm so happy. It's been like the most joyous experience because when I started my health coaching business back in 2009, I never thought I was taking such a huge you know, pay cut from like the, my, my previous career in advertising, I thought I am never going to have any money again. <laughs> I never thought that one day I'd be able to afford a big old Italian vacation like that. And it just meant so, so much to me because my family, like we are, I'm, I am 100% Italian and yet I have never been there. So it's a lifelong dream, you know? In fact, when I started my business, I was terrified about money. Really, I was terrified of the whole career change thing. I was terrified about really every aspect. So I definitely understand the fears that you're probably encountering. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, as always, despite all odds, despite the fact that I'm hiding out in my kid's rec room in the basement because I'm getting work done upstairs, and despite the Zoom update that kept me from broadcasting for a solid five, 10 minutes, I am once again recording this while live streaming into our Health Coach Power Community Facebook group. So if you're here with me live, let's make the most of it. Tell me in the comments what fears are getting to you. Like what's most scary for you about getting started? And for all of our listeners, I want to invite you to check out our free Healthy Profit University Blueprint and see how you can add more clients to your practice in the next 90 days. It is entirely free when you go to healthcoachpower.com slash blueprint. I'm going to drop that link right here into our Facebook chat and say hello to Linda and to Nicole and to everyone who's joining us live today. Thank you so very, very much for being here. So the first fear and the one that I've heard come up most, most often, um, Linda's saying she's worried that she may not know how to respond to clients' questions, that is exactly in line with what I was going to say first. It's this fear of, do I know enough? Right? I definitely felt this way when I got started as a health coach. My degree is in, can you guess? Art. <laughs> I majored in art, which was lovely for when we were touring uh, Florence and Rome. And it was, it was wonderful to be able to explain the paintings and the changing of like how they learned to paint from the 13th to the 14th to the 15th century. It all really came in handy there. Did not come in handy as a health coach so much, not so much. Anyone else here have a degree in something completely unrelated to health? <laughs> it's crazy sometimes when you think about shifting gears so, so much. So I felt like how could a health coaching certification be enough? I still had so, so much to learn. And of course it never ends. Like the learning never ends. Even today, 15 years later, I still have so much to learn, but here's the good news. If you're relating to any of this, you're a health coach. You are not an information dispensary. Like that's not what a health coach is. Google has information. The library has information. People go to their doctors for information. But as a coach, that's not what your purpose is. People don't really need more information. Oh my gosh, we have way too much of it. Nor are they, they're not going to pay you for simply having information. So we don't have to worry about always having the right answer, always knowing all the things. I want you to remember that as a coach, you are a conduit for change. So you might bring information to people that they probably have already heard in many cases, but you do it in such a way that they can easily understand and take action on that information. That's what's different. The taking action part, the holding uh, you know, space and accountability part. 
all the coaching things, right? That's what makes us special. And that's what's really the key for change. You're going to create a safe space. You're going to hold that space for your clients. You're going to help them along the path of change one step at a time and actually listen when they talk. Shocker, right? This is your value as a coach. So if you're like, I don't know enough things, I don't have enough certifications, I need to like memorize more about health and nutrition, you do not. You do not. The answers are almost always a, a quick Google search away. I mean, I remember one of the first um, uh, consultations that I ever did with a client, and she told me that she had ulcerative colitis and I didn't know what that was at all. So I just smiled and nodded. And then afterwards I, I looked it up. <laughs> and of course, over the years, I learned a lot more about all various conditions that I had never even heard of before, but I still probably only know a tiny, tiny percentage of, of, of everything that's out there, right? So that's normal. That's completely normal. Let's see what you guys are saying here in the chat. I'm seeing uh, Karina says that I will be at a loss for words when they ask questions or that I don't know enough. Yep. Well, Karina, did that help at all? What I just said? I mean, sometimes you, the best thing is for you to be at a loss for words because the silence, the tool of silence in coaching, it's so valuable. Use it. <laughs> You're really always having the answer can actually backfire on you in a coaching relationship. Nicole says, I can most definitely relate to the majority of everyone's responses. We are all in the same boat here. Like I've lived this. You guys have all lived this. Let's just air out the dirty laundry and say, here's how we're feeling. And no, you know, none of you, we're not alone. Okay. So the next big fear that I want to talk about is the idea of, could I ever start my own business. Like I've never run a business before. Anyone here never run a business before? My hand is up. This is the first business I've ever started, ever run. I mean, granted, it's been a pretty long time now, like 15 years, but I, I never had a business before. Some people are like natural born entrepreneurs. <laughs> that was not me at all. And uh, David is someone who posted one of our coaches in our health coach power community Facebook group. He wrote just the other day, he wrote, can we work as a health coach without being registered as a company? And I'm like, yes, yes, you can. But we tend to think like, oh, I need this. I need that. And it gets really overwhelming. So if you've never run a business before, and I see Linda and Nicole, you guys are in the same boat. Same, same here. I had absolutely zero intention of starting a business. I wanted no part of it. Like I had always worked as a W-2 employee. Anything else felt crazy. Like I, I was not going to take that kind of risk and work for myself. I had no idea where to begin. And like I said, I didn't even want to, no desire. I wanted someone to hire me because that's what was comfortable and what I knew. Well, uh, here we are. <laughs> it's 15 years later. And guess what? Now I pay myself as a W-2 employee. Isn't that wild? My business pays me and gives me a W-2. And after all these years of making my own decisions and working hard and, you know, wearing all the hats, which is something you just have to do when you are a solopreneur, at this point, I am completely unemployable. <laughs> So for someone who never wanted to leave a salaried position, I really don't think anyone would ever hire me. Like I could never work for someone else again. It takes getting used to. So if you don't see yourself as an entrepreneur right now, that's okay. You won't, you won't at first. It's like, um, how many of you do yoga? You can think back to the very first time you took a yoga class. I remember my first yoga class. I was a hot mess and I was sore for about two weeks afterwards. And you just kind of fumble your way through and you're like, I'm not a yogi. I'm not a yoga person. Like I'm, I'm in this class, but this is not me, you know? And uh, I, I remember feeling that way because I had gone to this like very dogmatic Ashtanga yoga class. <laughs> It was a funny one to do as a first class, but slowly over time, you know, your yoga postures improve. You start to pick up the language, the jargon. Um, you understand what the teacher's saying. And like, after a while, you're the one helping the newbies in class. Ah, right. So it's the same if you're like, I'm not an entrepreneur. 
that's okay. You can feel like that for now. And slowly over time, you're going to pick things up in just the same way. I think the big hang up here is that we're trying to launch a perfectly polished, you know, like David with his question, do I have to be registered? Everyone's like, do I have to have a business bank account? You know, we want to have this perfectly polished professional business with all the bells and whistles. But to get started, I have said this once, I have said it a million times, you do not need a website. You can be a health coach without that. You do not need a big social media following or any social media following. You do not need to register yourself as an official business. You do not need to have insurance. I'm not saying that some of these things aren't a good idea. I'm just saying you can start without all of them, right? I want you, this is going to sound a little nuts, but I want you to think about a teenager who um, is offering to babysit. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have kids. I have two boys. They're a little older now and they don't need a babysitter. But a couple of years ago, I was getting lots of babysitters. Now, babysitting might sound like a menial job and nothing like health coaching. But when parents hire a babysitter, they're trusting their precious children to this person, right? So it's not menial at all. I, like I said, I'm a mom of two. I've hired so many babysitters. Were they registered as an LLC? No. <laughs> Did they have a whole bunch of certifications? I think there are like babysitter certifications these days, but I don't know. Even if they were, what does that really mean? Did they have a website? Did they have a business card? Did they have a business bank account? No, of course not. I paid them in cash or wrote them a check and that was the end of it. So I'm not saying that you should run yourself or run your business like a babysitter <laughs> forever, but like to get started, just think about that model of earning, right? You provide a much needed service. And I apologize for the banging if you can hear it because they are now hammering above my head. Um, but you're providing a much needed service, right? As a health coach and people are going to pay you for it. So just find a client, get experience, get paid and everything else is going to come in time. Do you believe me? Yes, no. Tell me in the chat. Because I know it's like, you can hear me say this, but in the back of your head, you're still like, I have to get this form and I have to get a lawyer to do this. And I have to get this fancy blah, blah, blah. No, you don't, you guys, you don't need any of it. Okay, Linda believes me, great. <laughs> Somebody, everything else will come in time. I promise. Okay, let's move on to the next big fear, which is kind of related to that first one about, you know, do I know enough? But I think it's there's a nuance here because it's about, other people's perception of you. How do you feel telling people that you're a health coach, especially if you're new? I think there's this fear. I know I had this fear of who will take me seriously as a health expert. Like this had to be my personal biggest fear. I had spent years working my way up the corporate ladder in big advertising and Finally, I was kind of sort of getting taken seriously. You know, I had my window office and I had a nice paycheck finally. And you felt like I've earned this. But as a health expert, no one considered me a health expert. I didn't even consider myself a health expert. I had no clout in that arena. Do you? I mean, some of you might, you know, some, sometimes we have health coaches who come into the coaching industry and, you know, you're a registered nurse or you're a doctor or you're a researcher or something that's related, but I had nothing. I had zero experience. Just uh, the only experience I had was experimenting with my own health. So all of my friends and family and coworkers, you know, who took me seriously? Nobody, no one. That's who. I was just always kind of getting a side eye, like, what are you doing these days? And I noticed, especially in retrospect, I can remember that I played myself down talking to people because I was embarrassed to be new at something and different. And I was just unsure of myself. So here's what I need you to know. No one at all in the world will take you seriously until you take yourself seriously and until you treat health coaching like a career, you know, just like I showed up every day, my job for advertising. It's not like some days I went and some days I didn't. And some days I decided it was too hard. <laughs> you know, I went every day. I took it seriously. It's a job. You treat health coaching in the same way. Other people are going to start responding to that. 
Again, that doesn't mean that you have to have all the answers or that you have to know every last thing about nutrition, but it does mean showing up. It does mean positioning yourself at the front of the room. Like think cooking classes, think workshops, think speaking events, or even writing articles, sort of positioning yourself at the head of the virtual room in various ways. Um, it means creating consistent content, like a blog or a podcast or a YouTube channel. And with those types of moves, you can expect perfect strangers to become raving fans and think the world of you, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, you know, Nicole, she's an amazing health coach. And they're going to tell all their friends about you, even though you're like, am I, a health? I think I'm a health coach, <laughs> but when they meet you in that light and you have positioned yourself at the front of the room, you know, your friends and family may still be giving you the side eye, but these perfect strangers are going to take you seriously from day one, totally normal expand your circle. That's the best advice I can give you. Get outside the group that already knows you as whoever you were before, because it's going to take them longer to adjust. Don't worry about them. There is an entire world full of people waiting to meet you as a health coach in the role of health coach. And you're going to find your people. Nicole's asking, what about your own health challenges? Can you share those stories two as content. Yeah, absolutely. And that can definitely be a way to um, show your experience, right? If someone has gone through uh, Lyme disease or, you know, whatever your story is about, and I'm going through that now, it doesn't really matter what credentials they have. Oh my goodness. There comes the banging again. Please stop you guys. <laughs> but they're going to read your story and be like, wow, she's been there. The only thing I want to caution you against is writing your story when you're or sharing your story, like with something that you're still really in the thick of right now, it's usually more filled with hope and makes for a better story when you're on your way out of that terrible scenario, or like after you've at least figured it out somewhat, it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to be in perfect health, but when you have the story to share of not just having a problem and dealing with the problem, but at least starting to resolve that problem. Which brings me to <laughs> another big fear. This is number four. What if my health isn't where I want it to be? How can I be a health coach if my own health isn't perfect? So first I want you to just consider that if only health coaches in perfect health could practice, like if I could round up all 14, 15,000 members or of our health coach power community group and you know single out the ones who were in some sort of quote, perfect health, we would have about 10 health coaches standing. Like that's it on the whole planet, we would have just a handful of health coaches because health is a journey. Even if today you or I, you know, we're very lucky. We find ourselves in excellent health right now. Tomorrow may be different, but having your own health story that you share, just as Nicole is asking about, it's a gift. It's not a problem. So if you are still dealing with symptoms of Lyme disease or long COVID, if you're not at your ideal weight or whatever it is, it makes you so much more relatable to your clients. So I want you to imagine a client who's feeling lousy, right? Her doctor's telling her to lose weight. She's been diagnosed with who knows what, a couple of chronic issues, prediabetes, autoimmune disease, whatever. Now here comes along little miss perfect health coach, <laughs> you know, sipping a green smoothie and just being all cute and perfect. That has the potential to make this client feel even worse about herself and to think, oh, I'm so far from that. I'm never going to get there. This coach doesn't understand me. I'm alone. But if you can show up imperfectly perfect and you can relate to her struggles, she's so much more likely to feel comfortable and not give up. And that's a very strong coaching relationship. So we are really never aiming to be perfect. So like Nicole was asking, if you share your story in big ways or even in small ways, just like letting your clients know that you've been there or here's one time that I went through that, you know, share, share an anecdote. It can be really, really powerful. Oh, 
And Debbie is making me feel so much better right now because she says hilarious about the banging because they're installing carpeting in the apartment next door. And so Debbie's got hammering going on on her end. I've got hammering going on on my end. You see how that just worked? So I'm feeling like all nervous because I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to record a podcast with all this banging going on? But then like Debbie's relating to me and I'm relating to her so much better because we're like, yeah, this is life. You know, sometimes you have a guy banging on the floor right you know, next to you and it's driving you crazy. <laughs> They were supposed to finish all of this work when I was in Italy, by the way, and they, they did not. So it goes on. So moving on to the fifth big fear. Anyone have this one? You could just say yes in the chat. The fear is, can I really make money as a health coach? You know, and then you kind of make that, that face where you're like, I don't think so. Mm. Well, for that, I'm going to refer you to the episode that I published last week. It's episode 297, all on this topic of making money as a health coach. The short answer is yes. The longer answer is not always, but still yes. It's not a given, right? Nothing in life is a guarantee. You are starting your own business. It's not just being handed to you. But think about all the jobs you've ever had. You could get fired, there could be layoffs, there could be a million reasons why it doesn't work out for you. This is no different than that. And I tend to think when you're running your own business, you are more in control. You are more in charge. I thought it was risky in the beginning. I wanted to be that salaried W-2 employee. And guess what? I got laid off in 2008 when the banks crashed, just like most people in advertising at the time. I had no control over my career. There were no jobs to be had, but these days, no one can fire me. <laughs> when you work for yourself, you can always pivot. You can always do something slightly different. You can change what you're offering. The economy changes. Oh my gosh, COVID happened. My, my career, I've gone through so many different ups and downs. I actually think it's a much safer, safer position to be in. So can you really make money as a health coach? I assure you, you can. Please go check out episode 297 for the rest of that. So how are we feeling? Did I hit on some of your biggest fears today? Did I miss any? Let me know. Hopefully, I, basically, I just want you to know that you are completely normal and we have all been there. And if you are looking to add more clients to your practice in the next 90 days, even if someone is hammering outside your house all day long, you can make it happen. Check out our free Healthy Profit University Blueprint. It is at healthcoachpower.com slash blueprint and have a great rest of your week. I will see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.